Yes, sir. All right. So just a quick update here on uh, MES 2023 release. That's the next one that's coming out for MES. I'm Chip Bargani, the product manager for MES. I'm located out here in uh, Southern California in our Lake Forest office. So hopefully a lot of you are familiar, or if not, we'll go quickly over what is MES, if you aren't clear. So uh, MES, you know, covers a lot of different uh, functionalities. And so within it, we, we basically have three kind of modules for it. There's an operations piece that covers a lot of the operational transactions, which you get most of your product tracking and genealogy type history, some labor tracking, um, bill of materials, that kind of uh, configuration information, some document control. Another piece for performance, so that's your, your downtime, um, your equipment, overall equipment effectiveness type measures through that piece. And then our most recent addition, which has still been seven, eight years ago, was our quality management functionality to do your quality tests and things along those lines. And then the part of the model still includes some maintenance, which would be an external. Jeff, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I don't yeah. mean to interrupt, but we're, we're seeing a, a title slide of a MES PowerPoint. Uh, just in the dev view. I don't know if that was your intent. I was stepping through the presentation. It didn't. Yeah, share but your shared way. screen is not the right screen, Jeff. You're you're probably displaying the presentation on another screen. Now you're good. There you go. There we go. All right. I won't go back since I am short on time, but. Uh... This is again the Mesa functional model that I was stepping through here, the different functionalities. So again, operations management, performance management, and quality management are the functionalities we provide within uh, our MES offering. Again, this can sit on top of a system platform for our connectivity to IO and any additional control mechanism that you would have there at that point. And then for integration, we have um, enterprise integrator for integrating to some of the other external systems like ERP. So what are we trying to do with this next release or kind of the, the longer term look of what are we doing in MES? And so we have a number of customers even today, um, somewhat depicted on the left-hand side of the screen there that have multiple sites, you know, large scale um, implementations of MES where they've got multiple sites in multiple geographies, maybe in different time zones. Um, and, and currently a number of those, you, you, you can put uh, Viva MES on each individual site um, and where we're trying to drive toward is where you can have more of a central center of excellence type uh, configuration where you have a central database and central repository where you install the Aviva MES and perhaps the work tasks and enterprise integration and then the system platform more located down at each of the individual sites. And so what this release is to help drive that um, conversion or drive towards those type of large scale customers. Um, still continue to install MES single site and still meets those needs as well. Um, but a number of the functionality I'm gonna talk about here is really dealing with these multi-time zone issues, culture issues, um, scalability issues, uh, some single points of failure, those type of uh, features. So specifically to MES 2023, uh, again, some additional functionality around multi-time zone handling. So handling of, of local time zone, when you're dealing with local versus UTC and the conversions back and forth between those, depending on where your client sits and who's looking at the data. The high availability, we've merged our MES middleware was one of the services. And then we had a separate MES service that handled a lot of the background redundancy tasks. Um, that MES service was a single point of failure that we only needed one of those running at a time where you could have multiple middlewares. And so we've merged that functionality into the middleware. So now any middleware can perform the tasks of the MES service. And then we've extended some of our web API interactions. Uh, that's more for our model driven approach and that team that's building out our model driven content, which is relied upon work tasks. And then a number of security enhancements. Um, perhaps you've heard a number of those that were coming to System Platform 2023, so similar on MES. Um, this product's been long, long in the tooth. It's been out there many, many years. And so we do have to do some upgrades every, every so often and pretty much every release from now on to maintain our security posture. And then the items more on the right are more to address just uh, the product itself, so not specifically geared towards large-scale implementations. 
Um, we've had multiple configuration user experiences in, in the past, and so we're gradually and have been moving all those into the MES client as the single point for where you do your configuration. And so we've made another step with that one, moving the remaining of the most of the MES supervisor configurator elements. Some enhancements to shift patterns, which I'll step through later, as well as some of the quality management enhancements. And then uh, just a note that this uh, release of MES 2023 will work with System Platform 2023. Um, there's a number of common components that both of us have uh, matched up with at this release so that uh, they'll be compatible. And then finally, shortly after the MES release, we also have a partner product uh, for enterprise integration, and they'll be also um, doing a release um, shortly after the MES release. So if we dig into some of the details, uh, so I was talking about with the system platform common components. So again, MES only supports system platform 2023, system platform 2023 only works with MES 2023, right? There's a, a step together where all these uh, version releases work together. Uh, we will be shipping BI Gateway, which is the new version of intelligence. So their latest release is 2021 SP1. So that will be on our media. And then there will be a new work tasks connector and extension for MES that will work with, again, work tasks 2023 also has a release uh, coming out later this year that will match up with our release. Um, in terms of when the MES release is coming, I think I skipped over that earlier as by the end of the year is what we're targeting. Um, we're doing some, had some last minute uh, replanning efforts going underway right now that we're trying to get a firm date, but uh, by the end of the year is our goal. And so if you happen to try to install either MES or system platform with an incompatible version, you'll get an indication. So from the MES side, we'll tell you that it will not allow you to install with an older version of uh, application server on the system, as well as in the system platform install, it'll at least give you a warning. Um, it will still install because you need to update system platform first before you can update MES. And handling our multi time zones type support, uh, the main driver there is daylight savings time for one number of customers, as well as when you're in multiple sites. Previously, when you define shifts and shift definitions, those shifts had to be time zone specific uh, because of the way the MES server just kind of generated shifts. We've improved and enhanced all that so that it now uses the entity's sites region which will let us know what time zone that site for all those entities resides in and use that now for converting UTC to local. And so that's been enhanced. And then we've also had an internal table where we kept daylight savings time offsets and a number of countries, they don't follow a, a standard pattern like the US where you know exactly what day uh, when that's going to happen year to year. Uh, they declare it each year. And so there's always been operating system updates, and then you'd have to go in and manually delete and update this table yourself in some of those regions. So we've got all that cleared up uh, in this release. And then the uh, background database server as well has a default time zone for those type of transactions that aren't site specific. Uh, we'll know what time zone you want us to, to use those for local and UTC. Um, and the merging of the MES service into the MES middleware like I said, that removes that single point of the MES service. And so now any middleware can perform the background tasks. Uh, you can designate a specific one if you want a specific one to be the one that performs that tasks. And as long as it's running, it will declare itself the one that runs the background task. Otherwise, as one drops out, um, another one will pick up the background service tax, tasks within a minute, uh, which is the, the general frequency that we run these things at. Uh, in, in addition to just the uh, middleware being the MES service task, we also now allow an MES proxy, uh, which points to the middleware where you want to do your transactions. And so you can have remote machines that just send their transactions across to a middleware residing somewhere else. And so that middleware proxy can now point to multiple middleware hosts. So another uh, big effort across the company is some user interface modernization. So we want to have the look and feel um, be somewhat synchronized between products and, and the way that we lay out the ribbon bars. Um, so the main thing for MES, it was uh, MES client that I'm showing here. So all the icons have been updated to this grayscale look and feel. 
um, some of the coloring schemes. You see, we got a purple theme um, throughout some of the things when you're doing your configuration. Uh, the good news, at least, is that none of the descriptions have changed and the location where everything is has not changed. So all the menus that you're used to are still there, or all the, the locations of where they are, the ordering, none of that has changed. Um, and so the, the main thing here are the icons that have been modified. Similar on the web portal, the web portal was already fairly close to meeting our, our standards. So there's just some minor modifications there on some of the settings. And again, uh, a number of the icons uh, were updated as well. So the other big effort that's been consuming our time here is moving the configuration of these items out of supervisor and to MES client. So now data log configuration is moved into supervisor, um, is moved out of supervisor into MES client. Shift patterns and shift schedules. Um, we've done that to replace what shift exceptions were in supervisor. You, we did have the shift schedules inside MES client already, um, but shift exceptions were separate and then as an effort of moving those shift exceptions into MES client, we took an opportunity here to kind of revamp how we do all of our shift uh, scheduling. And I'll touch on that another slide here. Um, some of the item folders has been removed, customer and vendor configuration has been moved to MES client. And then really what you see left up there in the top right uh, corner there is inventory, supply chain connector configuration, and the storage entity status. So the inventory has uh, similar screens available in our model driven MES approach. So we already have some of those screens available, similar with the storage entity status uh, and model driven. And so that really is just going to leave supply chain connector as the main reason. And again, if you're using enterprise integration, you're not using the older MES uh, supply chain connector functionality anyways. So for data log, I've just got a number of screenshots here. Uh, won't go into a lot of detail. I'm just showing you that uh, you know, the data log's been moved here. One new item with the data log is we did give you an option now to create a custom view that will go and cast all your column values to the correct name and data type um, through this view so that now you can query the view and return back data in the correct data type. So if you have you know, integers or real type data, you can now do summations and things like that, even though the data is stored um, in strings in the database. So on the shift patterns and schedules, uh, what we've done here is if anyone's familiar with Insight Performance, it had the concept out there of defining a shift pattern, which is a time period. Uh, this fits well with a lot of food and beverage customers that have a high season and a low season. And so during the high season, you may have uh, seven days a week, three shifts a day, and the low season, you have five days, two shifts type patterns. And you can predefine these and set these up with a time period with a start time and an end time. We've used that same concept now to do what was previously shift exceptions in supervisor where you can have a, an additive like an overtime or a subtractive holiday type shift exceptions. And those are now also defined as this new shift pattern concept. And then the shift patterns themselves have their shift schedules. So the current version of MES shift schedules are assigned specifically to entities. Whereas here, we have now have the shift patterns contain their corresponding shift, shift schedules, um, especially for the regular shift patterns that can be scheduled. And then you finally, you link those shift patterns to the specific entities, and then they'll propagate down. The main advantage this gives you is previously, if you had to define overtime for an entity, that entity would have to have its own shift schedule. With this new approach, you can have your shift, your regular shift patterns and schedules all defined at a higher level propagate it down, and then do overtimes on specific entities. And then finally, we'll give you a calendar type view, um, similar to the view that you had in the existing product where you assigned shifts to entities. Quick screenshot, just the customer is where we define our customers and customer contacts right there. And then uh, a few additional features we'll touch on. Uh, go ahead, was that a question? Or just great. So last couple of enhancements here um, on the quality management side on one of our calendar frequency, being able to build in a delay before it kicks off so it doesn't trigger immediately. You can put in a bit of a delay. Um, another one there, a customer requested to be able to better filter his QM specifications by having the category 
So this is a field that was already in the database. We just made it exposed now in MES client so that you can configure it. And then finally on the SPC chart control, uh, being able to add spec limits instead of just your, your typical control limits and warning limits. And you can now additionally enable spec limits to be shown on the uh, control chart. So the last one here is just more around uh, better integration. Well, what first one's for security with the proxy in the middle where the communication now is securely encrypted. So that relies on some of the system management server certificate to do that communication layer. So that's been enhanced. And then to better support system platform OMI, um, in the previous release, you know, our .NET controls, you could put them in a folder and import the folder. Uh, with this release, we now have actually packaged those up into a package file that you can import into OMI and have these all the MBS.NET controls exposed now in OMI in that manner. And then finally, with our enterprise integration partner product, that's targeted to be released within a month of the MES release. And they're, they're, one of their major changes there is now you can configure that through the same post install configurator that you install many of the other Wonderware, former Wonderware products. All right, with that, I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. <laughs> 